My name is Lauren, and I am delighted to welcome you to Improvate's first International Innovation Forum. Joining us, though, are speakers from 13 countries and representatives from over 20 countries. Among them, world leaders, opinion shapers, medical and security experts, investors, and technology executives. Improvate derives from two words, improvement and innovation. And about a year and a half ago, we realized that there is an opportunity to create a platform that puts the money where the mouth is. And this platform hopefully will enable all of you to create business and strategic collaborations that will make the world better for everyone. The talent is um, by far some of the most talented people here in this region. Silicon Valley wouldn't be Silicon Valley if it wasn't for, you know, the innovative minds and the spark, the small community that's happening here in Tel Aviv. I'm so proud to be with you, to be one of you uh, and all of us coming here together, being members of the Improvate family, a family of joint values, a family that has a very special ambition and a goal to serve. Okay, now we are going to invite someone to the stage. He's not with us. We are looking for Shachar Gal. Please join us. And he's going to offer a presentation for us. Come on stage. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. You can present. There should be a microphone for you there. I have the microphone on Great. me. I just need the clicker. Thank you. So it's a privilege to be speaking after Danny Gold, Boaz Levy, and this panel, so thank you for that. Let's start by watching a short video that was published recently and went viral. So having seen that video, it makes us think, if this technology exists, why aren't we seeing robots involved in our lives? Robots can be useful in so many applications, just to name a few. They can help us around the house, in farming, at hospitals. They can even be sent into dangerous areas instead of human and security and defense applications. So why aren't we seeing them? In other words, where are the robots? What we're going to do in the next few minutes we're going to look from a bird's eye view of what robots are made of and try to understand what's keeping them from being involved in, in our lives. So robots are made of five different disciplines. The first discipline, mechanics. Every robot has some kind of mechanical structure. If we want advanced capability, usually it's advanced structure. It comes with weight. And to move all that weight, we need power. We need a big battery. The battery weighs in itself which adds to the weight, reduces capabilities, and then we need a bigger battery. So managing that three-way trade-off, that's the art of robotics mechanical engineering. We have two factors that are driving this discipline forward. One of them is advanced 3D printing. Today we can print even in our office very complex structures. We can print even metal. We can print composite materials. So this makes prototyping faster than ever before. Also, due to the electric car industry, we have today batteries with larger capacity, less weight, and soon they'll have fast recharge. So that's another driver that drives this discipline forward. Second discipline, motor control. Every robot is made out of different kinds of motors and their combination. And we need to control all of them perfectly. Take, for example, the robot that we saw in the video. It's made of 28 different motors that need to be in perfect sync. Because if they don't, the center of gravity of the robot will move and the robot will fall. So that's for 28 motors and it sounds like a lot. But sometimes people are asking us, when will there be humanoids, robots that look like humans? 
Humans have 360 joints. It means that in order to have such complex structures, the motor control engineers need to be like conductors of symphonies of motors, and we are not there yet, but we are getting there fast. The third discipline is hardware. Humans understand their environment by using their senses. Robots understand their environment by using their sensors. And sometimes it's similar. Take, for example, the module that you see on the left. That's a stereoscopic vision module that you can buy it off the shelf. And it will even provide for you a depth perception, a 3D perception like we have with our eyes. The module that you see on the right, that's a 360 degree acoustic sensor, similar to what we have with our ears. You can even buy off the shelf today very strong graphical processing units that GPUs due to the gaming industry to process all that information. But the major advantage with robotics is that they are not limited to our five senses. Take, for example, the sensor that you see in the middle. That's a leader sensor. It has a laser that scans all the environment and then reconstructs a map out of it. So that's a very powerful sensor. It's going to be in almost any robot, and we humans don't have it. Same goes for IR vision. This is why in this discipline, robots are going to have a big advantage. The fourth discipline, firmware and artificial intelligence. We got the information from the sensors. We can process it. Now the question is, what do we do with it? How do, how do we make out of it something that is understandable, that the robots can make decisions upon? The picture that you see on the right, that's a map from a leader sensor, the reconstruction of the leader sensor. What we're going to do now is take the video stream, fuse it on top of that, take the information from the acoustic sensor, fuse it on top of that, and that way we'll have a comprehensive understanding of what's happening all around us. This will mean that robots will be able to make faster and better decisions than humans, even when the situation is changing, and this is going to open endless opportunities in all fields of robotics. This is why in general robotics we call this discipline the robotics brain. The fifth and last discipline, every robot is uh, activated by some kind of interface. It's called man-machine interface, or in our case it's man-robot interface. If we want to tell the robot, instead of do this, do that. It needs to be simple. We don't want to call an engineer to rewrite the code. This is where the interfaces enter. So we already have very advanced interfaces. The interface that you see on the right, that's a lady that's operating from that screen, five robotic systems patrolling an operational border. So she's doing a job that would otherwise require 20 soldiers, and she's keeping them out of harm's way. If we're talking about girl power, this is it. To summarize, we see that robot, when we're talking about robots, we're actually talking about five different disciplines and their combination. This is why robotics is the ultimate high technology. You see that almost in all technologies, we are ready for robots. We just need to close a gap in synchronized motor control and at the robotics brain, and then we'll see robots involved in almost all aspects of our lives. So that's the road to robots. One last point that is important for us to make. Every month on our Friday, we teach children robotics. So if there will be any children that are going to see this, learn robotics. Turn, choose the discipline you like the most and be great at it. Don't wait for someone to teach you. Just open the internet and start learning. You're going to have a very exciting future. Thank you. Thank you so much to our guests who came here today and explained things and talked to us about their homelands. We appreciate it.
And that is it for Improvate's Jerusalem 2021 International Innovation Forum. The forum is just the first step in creating collaborations between governments, businesses, and investors, and leading Israeli technology companies that were here today. The exposure right here at this conference is a first step, the next step, delegations and real-world business connections to promote Improvate's vision of making technology accessible to all and improving the lives of people across the world. I would like to thank all of the wonderful speakers and panelists, the companies who presented the best of Israeli technologies, and all of you, of course, who were here with us today. A special thanks to two amazing women who made today's event possible, Improvate's founder, uh, Irina Nevslin, and Ronit Hassin Hochman, who together prove that nothing stands in the way of will. Thank you both so much for putting on today's important gathering. Happy Hanukkah, and we will see you guys at the concert tonight. Thank you.